Hey guys, welcome to another week of nutrition. This week I want to focus on sugar and hopefully um, when we talk about sugar being not so sweet after all, it might just highlight how much sugar is in your diet. When I was checking back and looking through my notes uh, about sugar and doing a bit of research, I highlight, I, I realized how much sugar is in adolescents' diets these days. And maybe as I'm going through this, and we're learning about sugar as from a science point of view just a little bit and then in what foods sugar is in you might just think to yourself um do i have as much sugar in here as what richard is saying okay um, and it's really really good to understand what foods contain sugar and just how the whole process works so let's start off with sugar is Sugar is a carbohydrate and it's found naturally in most plants or grains and there are two types of sugars and the first one is a monosaccharide and the second one is a diasaccharide. So we'll just focus on the mono first. You've probably heard of monos being referred to as simple sugars and they consist of glucose, fructose and galactose. So glucose is naturally found in plants and fruits. Uh, fructose uh, occurs naturally in fruits and sugar cane. When you stick fructose and glucose together, you get table sugar, the traditional what we know. When we get galactose, it's found naturally in milk, and it usually joins up with glucose. When you stick the two of them together, you get something called lactose. Okay, a lot of ooses. Um, disaccharides, yes, disaccharides is made up of two monosaccharides, and you might also have heard of these as called complex. So opposite the sugar, we got our complex. Sucrose is more commonly known as table sugar, which I've said already. Um, lactose is found in milk, which I said as well. Uh, just to go over lactose intolerance. So lactose needs to be broken down by an enzyme called lactase when it's being digested. And children have this enzyme, but when some people get older, they don't produce this enzyme anymore, and hence, hence they become lactose intolerant. Um, let's just have a quick look at that graph there. So we see the diasaccharides. Just by adding two monos together, we get another sugar. So we get glucose and glucose. Two of them together, you get a maltose. You get glucose and fructose. You get sucrose. And you get glucose and galactose. And you get your lactose, which I've just spoken about. So next slide. And that's yeah, what I just said there. Just wanted to go over it again. So what happens when we eat sugars? Right, well, let's have a look. When we eat sugar, our bodies convert it to gly uh, glycogen. Something I talk about a lot, how glycogen stores in the muscles need to be really, really full so we can full of energy so we can train and play to the best of our ability. So uh, when we eat sugars in our bodies, converts it into glycogen and it's stored in the liver until we need it or we burn it off. Um, or if there's too much of it, it converts that glycogen into fat, okay? Uh, in an ideal world, our bodies would go with the first option. However, this all comes down to how much glycogen is in the liver, our metabolism, so the rate at which we burn energy, and how much exercise we are actually getting. So after we eat the sugar, um, the body needs to digest it, obviously. So the pancreas releases a hormone called insulin, and some of you might know this already, and I don't want to go too detailed into it, but I think it's good that we kind of, it's, the visual is great to see it, see how it works, but it's good that we all get some sort of um, knowledge about how this works. So the pancreas released a hormone called insulin, and this regulates excessive amounts of sugar that comes into our body. So we're constantly getting that sugar in all different types of foods. And the more sugar that we eat, the more insulin is needed to regulate it. And uh, when the pancreas, has to work overtime to produce lots of insulin. It stores it as fat and skips using sugar as energy. Okay, um, and we also get insulin resistance there as well. So I don't want to go too specific on it, but that's what you're looking at from a scientific point of view. Right, let's just talk about teaspoons of uh, sugar. So in the top right hand corner as well, just make note there, six teaspoons is equal to 25 grams and nine teaspoons is equals to 37 grams, okay? So children aged two to 18, it's the same as uh, adult women. You're looking at six teaspoons is what you're allowed, or 25 grams per day. 
and for adult men you're looking at nine tablespoons or teaspoons which is equivalent to 37 grams so that's all the sugar that you are allowed to eat in your day and then the bottom graph down there which i quite liked you see underneath the middle one underneath teenagers sorry can i use this pen here uh this slide here so um under teenagers 11 to 18 years 40 percent of those people um 40 percent of those people are eating soft drinks or drinking soft drinks laced with sugar and then the other 22 percent is eating cereals cakes or biscuits so 62 percent of their of their of their calorie intake or their nutritional intake comes from sugar laden foods okay so that's a real issue and something that i just wanted to the highlight not scaremongering but these are just realistic figures so let me have another little chat with you um so you're probably thinking that something that is found naturally in food can't be that bad right well that would be wrong when these sugar beets are processed okay or sugar canes are processed or broken down and refined into sugar you see in your pancakes they are extremely bad for you so sugar and lemon on a pancake or just any white sugars refined sugar has absolutely no nutritional value and is bad for your health the only thing that they contain is a lot of uh, unwanted calories and the problem arises when these refined sugars are added to food the average daily allowance for sugar in an average person's diet should be about five percent of their total energy intake this is an average of intake of six teaspoons of sugar a day it sounds easy right but you probably can't imagine yourself eating six teaspoons of sugar all at once you're probably eating it and you don't even realize it so there are simple sugars hiding in your everyday healthy foods too so a can of soup contains up to five teaspoons cooking sauces can contain six teaspoons cans of soft drinks can contain nine teaspoons we're going to have a look at that later mm -hmm. um some cereals four teaspoons and even shock rot sandwiches can contain two we all associate simple sugars as being bad but when they're found naturally in food they are good okay they are found in fruit veg nuts whole grain foods and accompany many vitamins minerals and fiber which i've spoken about before So the ooze words so finding sugar on food labels so anything with ooze an easy way to recognize sugar on a label is by wrecking it the ooze suffix so you're looking at the back in the ingredient section here and when you find the word that ends in ose the ingredient list there's a good chance that there's high levels of sugar and a little rule that i abide by is in near the ingredients list the most the, the whatever is made up of the most within the food will, will be first on the list so if on the top five of any of these foods you see one of these ooses it's laced with sugar so you got to really watch on the sucrose the maltose the maltose dextrose fructose glucose galactose lactose glucose they're all just super high in sugars okay um next one so i just wanted to give you a quick look at what um how many sugars are in certain foods so we have the kick hat there 22 grams um a mars bar 35 grams 29 for a milky way snickers 26 so really really high in um in 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 these are your traditional chocolate bars obviously that i wanted to go to and um really high in your sugar so sugar can make you feel hungrier okay so i just these are highlighted because we all want a little snack and if we're not full if we don't have a proper breakfast and we still are a bit hungry we might go for one of these bars and um, so because sugary snacks such as pastries or chocolate bars contain no nutrients they are digested quickly in our bloodstream blood sugar levels rise giving us a quick energy burst and then they come crashing down and that makes you feel even hungrier than before this is why you can eat a bucket loads of sweets and still want a meal at the end of it sugar is highly addictive don't let the sweet taste fool you 
Sugar causes massive dopamine and serotonin release. These are hormones which tricks the brain into thinking that it's happy, happy hormones. This false feeling, this false feeling of happiness is why we turn to sugar when we are in a time of need. A well-known sugar crash is what causes us to go straight back for more of this sugar. So one of the most popular bottles that I see here in the school is that Coca-Cola bottle. And you're allowed six and nine table, teaspoons of sugar a day, and that has 13.5. Ribena, 12 and 12.5. Powerade is something that we're gonna link us to, five teaspoons. So really, really high in sugar as well. And that's one that guys might think would be good to take with um, sports. I would disagree. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and I'll show you a different version of what you could have instead of a Powerade or a Leucosate. So reducing your sugar in your diet. So how do we do it? So what I'd like you to do is look at cooking your own food. Anything processed or refined is loaded with sugar. So we have to remember that. And by using your own ingredients, you will eliminate any hidden sugars. And you feel better. Eating breakfast. So breakfast is the most important meal of the day. They say it increases your metabolism, the rate at which you burn um, calories. And I also find that by eating healthy breakfast, you're not craving sugary snacks by 10 o'clock. And make sure they're basing it around some sort of protein source. Discipline. So instead of saying, I will never eat sugar again, just take it slowly, have a cheat day at the odd time, but it'll just stop the binging. Exercise, we all know the importance of exercise. Um, but if you still have a high sugar content in your diet, it will lead to um, not optimal health. Make your own juices. Shop-bought shop juices are really high in um, sugar, loaded with it. So make your own. Check the labels for your nutritional value. That's fine. Keep a food diary. So you can either just write it down journaling or just write it on a piece of paper and have a look. Or you can track it on my fitness pal or one of those other apps. Ignore the alcohol, you shouldn't be doing that anyway. Um, unfortunately, we live in a world where sugar is hidden everywhere, but with a bit of discipline, we can learn to avoid it. So I think that gives us a good overall. And the last thing I'd like to do is show you a quick video here. Hey guys, um, I want to make a quick video today um, just about uh, sports specific drinks and we're going to focus on uh, isotonic drinks and hypotonic drinks. Uh, these are quite common at the moment. You see drinks uh, in, in shops such as uh, Powerade and Lucasades and things like this and sometimes kids or sports people might think that they have to have one of these types of drinks and this is a really quick and easy cost effective way of making one of these drinks that is actually more relatable to your own body what it needs so when we exercise we lose a lot of sugar and uh, glycogen in your muscle swells and we also lose a bit of uh, uh, salt when you sweat so we're just trying to replenish those the problem with the other drinks your leucosides and your powerade stuff they have too much sugar in it it's too much workload for the body just to break down the sugars that are in it we need to get the water in there first so the ratio of how much water is actually in the drink should be obviously the majority of it so this is a quick little recipe. I've got 800 grams or mils of water and I have my little bottle here and I'm just gonna pour one into the other. So an isotonic drink is a drink uh, where the salt and sugar content is the same as what the body is. And so we're trying to replenish that. Usually any cardiovascular exercise up to an hour and we're looking to replace this uh, body with isotonic drinks. A hypotonic is where anything over an hour and now we've gone into our burning more sugars so the ratio of the drink of the sugar in the drink will be increased slightly which I'll show you. So I've poured in, I poured in the water, okay, 800 mils and now I have my, this is just a cordial, any cordial you want, okay, 200 mils and I also want to add in some salt. Now this is a Celtic sea salt, also a Himalayan salt would be best to be used. On the packet of salt or table salt, how many ingredients should there be in salt? One, 
okay so have a look at the back of the of the salt and see how many um, ingredients there is if there's more than one personally I wouldn't eat it and um, so a little just a teaspoon that's it just one little squirt and then in that goes and now we have a liter so that's one drink done ready to go so that's what I would take with me, well not a glass bottle, but that's what you could take now would be a good time if you're going to do some sports, uh, go for your run, your happy heart, to drink that. On the other hand, if we're looking to do a hypotonic drink, uh, you're looking at changing the ratios of the uh, water. So you're looking at a one litre, so you're going to fill that to 400 mils of uh, my wadi or some sugar uh, you drink, and then add in your salt on top of that. Celtic or Himalayan, just a sprinkle. And then you're replacing your salts, you're replacing that sugar glycogen that you need in your muscles. So hope that helps. Um, better for you, cheaper for you. You made a, a whole liter there. Um, so uh, you've got lots of um, water for you for your, for your drinks. Cheers guys. That's it. Thank you very much guys. I hope you learned a bit about sugar and um, those isotonic drinks can be really, really beneficial for you. Cheers, guys.